Good morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. With me, my good friend and special guest, Dr. Friday, with Dr. Friday's Tax and Financial Services. She's in Brentwood, Tennessee, and she is a tax expert for individuals and small business owners. And this is one of the areas, again, we're talking just before the break about small business owners. You know, if you're in business for yourself, self-employed, whatever it might be, there's a lot of things that go into, you know, what's the structure of your business? Are you going to operate as a proprietor or a partnership? Uh, are you going to incorporate? And if you do, is it an S Corp or a C Corp? And I'll jump in there. Are you actually doing it correctly, even if you think you are an S Corp or a C Corp? Are you there treating you yourself with payroll and things like that? Because so often when we get our hands, the IRS says if you're a corporation, you got to yep. be an employee. Hank knows all about that kind of thing. If you're not, if you're an LLC, you cannot be an employee of your own company. So there's a lot of things that a lot of people will go down the Secretary of State oh, I'm going to be this, whatever yep. it is, and then that's it. And that's the other part. Every, you know, today in particular, I see more, everybody's about the LLCs, Limited Liability Corporation. Oh, oh, LLC, I want to be an LLC. Understand that there are lots of different ways to structure your business. Yeah. S Corporation, C Corporation, LLC, these are all ways that you're, what shielding. the concept is, is to shield your personal assets or separate your personal assets from your business assets. And if you're going to, if that's the goal, then you're going to have have to really follow the rules okay of keeping assets separate of not mingling any funds and for many that's not something that's easily done we see a lot of Pierce. times and that's it if someone <laughs> wants it the attorneys are expert at piercing that corporate shield finding that little you know, the little thing you did over here where you maybe you know wrote a check out of the business account for instance for a personal uh, exactly. uh, expense and boom all of a sudden you've just mingled the two and now there is no protection and by the way there are other ways to protect your assets and to separate things one of the things we, we get caught up in thinking well I need to create this corporation which will then separate out the business there are some there are some uh, asset protection things you can actually do around your personal personal assets mm -hmm. that can shield them from the business liability. So there's a, a couple different strategies there, not to mention starting with this, you want to definitely have an umbrella liability policy. Oh. Definitely. And if you're in business that like my type of business or uh, in many professionals that get into this for doctors of course you there's a malpractice uh, type of thing for me er errors and emissions insurance me this too. is the kind of thing where we carry liability Absolutely. insurance so if we to protect our clients all right we're gonna we got a call we're gonna go to the phones and then we'll come back to this and this is um, whoops I hit the wrong button there we go <laughs> hi Brian welcome to the work welcome to the retirement report Good morning, Coldville. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it, it's you, can you protect against the cold as well as retirement? Yes, the key is to stay inside. <laughs> turn the heat up. Turn the heat up. That's Lord, what I do. Yeah, I, I turned it up a little bit. I, actually, I have MPMC, and they're pretty good. There you go. Uh, I'm 51 years old, and uh, I've got a little savings scattered around, a couple of little accounts. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question, and then follow it up with, more retirement question but the first question is just a financial mm -hmm. question okay i remember uh i've had like uh, uh one uh, she, a lady friend of mine she owns a chinese restaurant she's always trying to like a certain amount of money she'd have to report to the, the government as far as savings is weird and she's always telling me that if you have more than five thousand dollars in the savings account or ten thousand dollars right that the federal government has to be informed of that on a yearly basis. Is that correct? That's a tax one? No, <laughs> no that, I mean, the IRS knows how much money you have in your bank if they're usually how looking they because your Social Security number is tied to your bank accounts, just like they know do what they car. Do checking to see how much money people have in savings accounts? Only time I've ever seen that is when, when in the middle of an audit. I mean, in yep. the middle of an audit, they will pull up and find out what you have. Normally, it's more about finding out the banks you have. They but you don't have to declare that on your... Uh, Income tax, you do you're not. An only time, interest the income, only correct? time that that would happen, and she, you mentioned that she owned a, a, a Chinese restaurant or whatever. If she's from overseas, there are bank oh, any person. About her for a minute. Okay. Let's talk more about me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about it's you, all Brian. About That's you. Right. I'm sorry, Brian. I didn't mean to you know, bring yeah, her think in. in. Think in terms of this. Here's, yeah. here's what, you know, bottom line, do they monitor everybody's bank accounts on a regular basis? No. no. They, 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 they actually, they're not uh, quite as, as uh, efficient even in many ways as, as we might think. But here's where it comes in. If you do have a tax bill that you owe and they're coming to collect, yeah, they're going to be looking for bank accounts. They have your bank accounts are tied to your social 
Social Security number, and it, you know, they can go in and take money out of your account to pay that tax liability. Take now they're they're right. not going to do, and that's not just going to happen. Like, oh, I didn't pay my taxes. They have to you send know, you three letters. Three months that letter. Happens. That yeah, exactly. There are rules. There are protections. There are ways you can even, uh, you know, protest it and 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 stop the process. Mm -hmm. But understand that's where when you start, if you start getting letters from the IRS, do not ignore them. Quickly get to your tax person and get that taken care of. Uh, this is a, this is so important. But going back to what you said as far as them monitoring what you have in a bank, no, not on it. This isn't something they Just pay attention interest. to. They're looking at the 1099. When you receive your 1099 each year that says how much interest you earn, they want to make sure when you file your tax return that, that the amount on your tax return exactly that that matches. But does that count as, as, as earned income that I have to pay taxes on the interest that I make out of my savings? That is correct. It is in, it is income, and you are going to pay tax on it, yes. Oh, that's, I think I've been doing that, uh, but uh, I don't have a lot of money saving, you know, like right. Right. 5000 here, 4000 there. Yeah, in the last couple of years, you've probably made minimal interest, and anything less than $10 isn't reportable. And we're going to get into talking about 1099s and showing you where to look on your 1099. There'll be a taxable, they'll show the amount that you earn, the amount that's taxable. There's a lot of, uh, we're going to go through other ones. You're going to have a 1099 with regard to your investment income as well. Right. If you have money invested in the stock market, for instance, interest, dividends, that kind of thing, that that's another one that not only will you get a 1099 for your taxes, but of course these things, anytime you get a tax, re, a tax form like a 1099 or a W-2, of course those are also copies of those are sent to the IRS and when you file your tax return, the they IRS is simply... On the, on, the, on, the, on the tax return, there's, right. there's a line on my uh, uh, there's a line there for earned income. Is there a thing that, and I can't remember, I don't think there's a thing in there that says interest from savings account. Absolutely. Yep. It's a uh, box eight or nine there. It should be at the into, very top. Fact, at the we're going to show a 1040, a 1040 form uh, as we get going in the show, but the very first eight. one, uh, box seven, is going to have, this is where your income things start. This is going to have wages, salary, tips, all of that, W-2, and they're going to want that W-2 uh, attached. That's it up on the screen for you now, Brian. So when you're looking at your 1040, after you fill out all that top information with Social Security number, name, address, and all that, dependents, filing staff, Status. You get down into the income box there. It says income on that far left, and it's box seven is the first one. Uh, that I just said about wages, box 8A, now you're going to have taxable interest. That's where we go. And then, um, so buddy, have, I'll let you jump yeah. in. Well, you have box 8A really, and 8B. They're not really looking to hurt people who have some money in savings take all well, their money through. Not at all. There's, there, there's no reason to be hurt. And, and, and again, if you've only got four or five thousand dollars recently with the, the interest rates, even if you're earning a decent interest rate, you're going to be probably only making four or five dollars a than, year. Yeah, you're going to, it's like it's 10, or, 10 or 20 dollars on a five thousand dollar savings account, if that. So, yeah. Well, there's I've not, got a couple of them. You know. yeah. I mean, okay, I'll give you an example. If you had a hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank, oh, I don't have that much. Okay, but this is to use the, the is to example? show the the numbers how they would work. When you're looking, if it's in a savings or a checking or that kind of account, and you're looking at maybe a tenth of a percent. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about basically maybe a hundred bucks at that, <laughs> even on a hundred grand. Yeah, that's what my point so it's is. It's not it's a just lot. Not interest right now is not. In, if you have it in CDs, if you have some other interest-bearing type investments. Like like bonds or something like that, then you might get more interest mm -hmm. on your money. But again, um, the IRS on this situation, if you think about it, and they're trying to collect taxes, they're not really going to be as, uh, you know, they now not say you wouldn't get a letter if your tax returns don't match up because they're going to be seeing this discrepancy and wanting you to explain. But the ones they really are after, of course, are the people that are, where, where, you know, as Willie, oh. what was this, Willie <laughs> Sutton, the bank, I think, if I got yeah. the name right, you know, why do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Well, why does the IRS well, go after people? They're looking for the ones with the and, money. And keep in mind, if you if you forget $100 on your tax return, if you're in the 10% tax bracket, that's only, what, $10? They're not going to likely come out and change your tax return for that. It, they're looking for people that are really not stating their income. Oh. So, you're, you know, it, it may be that your income bracket, so even if you haven't reported it, if they add it in, it may not change your taxes enough to make a difference. Yeah, I don't even make that much money anymore. I'm yeah. just like 24, 25 grand a year. Yeah. Yeah, but I so have a pretty big 401k, 
that took a major hit several years ago. Everybody is just starting to come back a little bit. I worked yeah. 10 years at the Tribune. Mm -hmm. But at one point, up there, pretty good. But right. But this is, you know, doesn't the, seem to be doing very well. And I, I don't know. I don't. I don't report that on my uh, uh, income tax return either. I'm not sure what you're not reporting, but make sure that you're, if you're supposed to, that you do. <laughs> exactly. Okay? All right, we've got to take a quick break. Brian, thanks for calling in. Um, one of the things that it comes into when you're, when you're, uh, that last comment in particular, I didn't want to get into it because uh -huh. we've got to take a quick break here, but please, 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 if you have income, understand the rules. There's certain income that you, that, you know, like tat tips and stuff like that we'll get into as far as what the reporting requirements are. But the last thing you want is th that's when you can get into fraudulent things, and we definitely want to avoid that, okay? Exactly. Anything that we're going to talk about is how to illegally, okay, <laughs> Use the tax <laughs> system to your best advantage. All right, we're going to get into that. We're going to. I'm going to go over some of these tax uh, forms to familiarize you a little bit with them, so you know when you get those what kind of things to look for to avoid errors and to make sure that in fact we do minimize your taxes. So join us here. We'll be right back on the retirement report. Mm -hmm.